I'm Connor Old and welcome to this bonus episode of Old's Oscar Countdown. And in this quick video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the recent Golden Globes, which happened just yesterday night, and give my thoughts on the winners and losers of the award show. But if you're new to this channel, I gave my predictions a couple of, a few days ago now. It's essentially an award season predicting channel. I gave my thoughts on a bunch of different categories, the Oscars mostly. But now, as we're really in the thick of things, the next sort of couple of weeks will be all about the award season and you know SAG and PGA and DGA reactions and how that affects ultimately the Oscar race and then things like Critics Choice I'll give my um, um, predictions for that and then eventual reactions when that happens just following along the awards race so if you're new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on a lot of these interesting videos and frequent videos normally I just do one uh, a video a week on Mondays but now because we have this sort of weird schedule with the Globes on Tuesdays and whatnot I'm going to be doing multiple videos a week versus just the one video a week giving thoughts and whatnot and analysis to keep you up to date and to give you high accuracy predictions. If you saw my Golden Globes predictions video, you probably did pretty well because I did not so bad myself getting 10 out of the 14 categories correct. That's a 71% accuracy and puts me in the top 6% of all Gold Der Derby predictors. I know a lot of people sort of are big fans of certain movies and that blinds them or whatnot, but I've been doing this now for seven years accurate predictions top five percent gold derby top 0.5 percent always accurate predictions i did it for top five percent for the nominations top six percent on this time now with the actual predictions of the winners that's something i pride myself in and that's why ultimately i do these videos i do the analysis i give my thoughts i hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below and your thoughts and analyses and ultimately we do great together so i appreciate the support you've been showing me on those videos hearing your feedback that's why i do it that's why i really love doing this kind of stuff giving my predictions and sharing it with you all overall did not too bad on the night getting the sort of big ones and a fableman's doing well and you know some support for everything everywhere all at once but also the banshees of Sharon, and even some of the categories where i went sort of that i was wrong in i sort of knew that the front runners weren't going to win i didn't go sort of chalk front runners for best song or best international film i felt that there was a sort of an upset coming now i was wrong in those categories because i didn't predict the upsets but i did sort of sense that there was something up going wrong in those categories so i felt good about that but without further ado, let's just jump into it. Essentially how this episode is going to work is I'm going to be talking about the winners and then losers. I also want to mention at the top of the video that Guys, this is the Golden Globe. This is not the Oscars. They're two completely different voting members and they act completely differently. And the Globe's winners oftentimes very rarely line up with the Oscars accurately. I mean, we're talking about 150 members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association versus thousands, almost 10,000 members in the Academy. Completely different, no overlap, very different voters. So it's not just say, oh my God, everything ever all at once disappointed. It's never going to win anything else. Or the Fableman is 100% sure for Best Picture. We really don't know. But what the Globes is important and why I cover it is because it's a televised event that a lot of people watch and the speeches are very important. Oftentimes we've seen actors cement themselves as frontrunners or as least contenders by winning a surprise win at the Globes and giving sort of a very buzzworthy, interesting speech and reminding voters that are probably watching at home, Academy members are still watching the Golden Globes. They're going, going, oh yeah, I really like that performance. I really like, really like that person based on their speech. I want to uh, give them a, a, an award. That really does matter. And sometimes giving a bad speech hurts too. So there's sort of positives and negatives to it. So I'll be talking about that here in this show, starting off with the winners. I actually think the big winner of tonight was Aki Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once. The movie didn't do so well, but I thought his speech early on in the night was really rousing, really emotional, reminded everybody that he started off as a kid actor in Steven Spielberg's movie in Indiana Jones. So it reminds people that he's he's been in their lives for a long time, even if they don't recognize him. It's a great story. So reminding people of that great story. He was very charming. He was very winning, very emotional, truly seemed very honored by the reward. And I think I think a lot of people will see that speech and go, wow, I really like him. I think he sort of pulled away with it rather than someone like a Brendan Gleeson. I actually don't think that race is so competitive anymore. I think this speech just c confirmed that thought. I think he Kwan will win Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars. Then another winner is The Fablemans. Of course, it won in terms of best film drama, which not a lot of people thought. I mean, quote unquote, experts thought it was Elvis or Top Gun. But here at Old's Oscar Countdown, we told you it would be The Fablemans all along. And of course, it was. But of course, winning there is still a, a big sign. And, and Steven Spielberg still winning at the at the Best Director Award was, was a big thing as well. And I do think both of his speeches for both, both film and Best Director 
was very heartwarming, was very heartfelt, reminded people of the personal element of this film, and this is something that was really tough for him, but the actors did such a great job, and I felt like there was a real winning attitude that Spielberg presented, and those speeches actually really helped him. So after a couple disappointing misses at the uh, BAFTA shortlist, this win here sort of cemented the fact that The Fablemans not only is a Best Picture nominee, but a Best Picture contender. A lot of people had written it off as even a contender in Spielberg, not even getting nominated. I still think Spielberg gets nominated. I think, still think the film gets nominated. And I do think those, both Spielberg and the movie are big contenders in their categories. And I think this is just another solidification, a reminder that, hey, it's okay to like Fablemans. People still like Fablemans. It's a good movie. You can vote for it. That kind of a confirmation and then a positive good speeches um, from Spielberg. Then another winner is The Banshees of Inna Sharon. And this is a winner just based on the fact that it beat out and sort of surprised and beat out everything everywhere all at once. If you remember the thumbnail of my Golden Globes predictions, it has everything everywhere all at once and The Banshees of Inna Sharon battling it out because I knew that would be the battle of the night. Ultimately, I thought everything everywhere all at once would have a bigger night. It didn't. You know, I predicted Banshees to win in screenplay, but everything could have definitely won there. And, you know, it still won for Colin Farrell for Best Lead Actor in a comedy. And then the big one, winning for Best Comedy. Once again, The Globe showing that they love Martin McDonough and his films. The sort of disappointing factor from me, I thought was that the speeches from Martin McDonough and then the speech for Best Film Comedy weren't really stand, stand out. They were kind of forgettable. I thought Colin Farrell had a good speech, but maybe not over the top amazing to really boost his odds necessarily. So that was a, a movie that it went in here, I think was kind of a big sign. It could have launched itself as a potential contender. I still think this race reminds me very much of 2015 when you had The Revenant, The Big Short, and Spotlight kind of a three horror horse a race for best picture this is a similar year i think the fablemans everything everywhere all at once and the banshees of sharon is the sort of three horse race that could win i could see everything everywhere all at once winning at sag dga going to uh, <laughs> spielberg and then pga going to something like the banshees i could definitely see that happening and be sort of a confusing race going into oscar night but it was a little disappointing for me that they didn't really sort of take their opportunity and make a really interesting exciting speech it was kind of just a little bit more traditional and, and and whatnot but not over the top to really push them over anything in terms of the speeches so the Banshees and Sharon ultimately did win because it surprised in the, the comedy category where it wasn't the front runner but it didn't do enough of the speeches to really make me go hey this could even win best picture for sure and then my final winner of the night I actually thought was Angela Bassett now her speech was very long, and I think that was sort of maybe may, can be held against her a little bit. But for the most part, she hit a few real key parts in that speech, talking about Marvel fans and their appreciation there. That's going to get some support from her. But then also dedicating the award to Chadwick Boseman, I thought was a very genuine and interesting uh, gesture that I think people, a lot of people will be writing about in articles the next day. So that's a bonus for her. Essentially, how I view this win is this gives Academy voters awareness to either say, if they haven't watched Black Panther, definitely watch it because it should be a consideration. And I think it gives Academy voters the sort of okay to go. It's okay to nominate her. It doesn't matter that's in a Marvel movie. She's still really great. It's Angela Bassett. She's a legend. She should be a contender. So I think because of this win, I think that actually pushes her over the edge in terms of probably getting a nomination at the Oscars. Now, we'll see about the SAG Awards. I'm going to give my reactions to SAG, PGA, DGA a couple days from now as we're getting these nominations today and tomorrow. But I think it is enough ultimately to probably get her the nomination. In terms of a win, who knows? She has to probably win at Critics' Choice and maybe even SAG too to get enough of that momentum. But right now I'm, I'm more hesitant of her winning because I'm just more hesitant of her getting a nomination for a Marvel movie and then winning for a Marvel movie. That would be surprising. But the supporting actress race is absolutely up for grabs right now. And I think this win here and her speech dedicating that to Chadwick Boseman is enough sort of a positive sign to get her potentially a nomination and supporting actress. I think she sort of helped herself at least be a strong contender in that category. And now talking about the losers, the big loser of the night ultimately was everything everywhere all at once. It was a front runner to win for Best Supporting Actress for Jamie Lee Curtis. She did a lot of campaigning for that, ultimately missed out. And then it could even even won for something like Best Screenplay. It wasn't the front runner, but it was a strong number two. It didn't there. And then ultimately didn't win for Best Comedy or Musical. So disappointed overall at the night. I thought it was gonna have a big night. It did have a good night, but not maybe the big night that it thought. I mean, some people even thought the Daniels would win for Best Director. So in that sense, it you know definitely did underperform. 
Now that's not to say that it's not gonna win anything at the Oscars or its best picture chances are completely done. That would be ridiculous to say, but it does hurt the movie just because I think this cast is a real winning cast. It reminds me of a Coda cast or a Moonlight cast in that they're all not huge big stars, but they're all respected people, sort of really entertaining people and genuine people that really do seem like they're campaigning for the movie because they love their experience on the movie and they do feel like a cast, which has helped ensemble type movies like Moonlight or Coda do well in terms of the best picture. So ultimately, I think it hurts them because they didn't get a chance to go out on the stage and really vamp for their movie in the way that they could have and gain positive steam from that. That being said, I'm still not going to knock them out of the front runner um, for Best Picture. They're still my front runner right now to win for Best Picture. I actually think because if the Banshees of Inner Sharon won here for Best Screenplay, it gives even more credence to uh, Everything Ever Relevance winning Best Screenplay at the Oscars just because of how the Globes and the Oscars have, have split in that category in, in recent years. So disappointing that it didn't get on stage to really show it the likability of its cast so that's a, a hurt in that sense and did lose out in some of the key categories at least for globes voters that being said it's still a major contender and you know actors like kiki kwan i think really helped and, and did win at, on the night another loser has to be top gun maverick there's a little bit of an inkling of a hope that it could be a potential best picture winner but it not winning here and not even winning for best original song hold my hand for lady gaga that was you know going you know, blanking at the Oscars. I know some people thought I was going to win for Best Film Drama. I never did, but you know, it not ultimately not winning there. I think shows that hey, it's still going to get in for Best Picture. Still going to win some technical awards, but it's not a serious contender to win for Best Picture. It doesn't have that groundswell of major support. It's a well appreciated blockbuster, but it's probably too actiony. It's probably too mainstream for the Academy, and that's just the the reality of the situation. And I also think that um, Shelley Miscavige joke made by Gerard Carmichael, which would had a very sort of flat response took the air out of the room uh, at the time I think really sort of showed everyone that hey are we really comfortable in nominating Tom Cruise we really want to have that conversation and those jokes again so I don't think Tom is going to get nominated for best lead actor I don't think it's going to get for screenplay mostly just text and then probably picture and then my final loser is going to be Austin Butler from Elvis and you may go hey Connor but he won he beat out Brendan Fraser in a competitive category yes that is true but I still predicted Austin Butler to win. He had an advantage, in my opinion, playing a biopic of a 20th century singer, which the Globes absolutely love, and the fact that Brendan Fraser wasn't there. So he had all this stuff going for him. So I kind of expected him to win. He did win. But the real reason why I thought he lost is, what did he do, do with it? This was a situation where Brendan Fraser was in the audience. Elvis could have won big. He could have had this really great speech that really showed everyone why he could actually win in this category. And I think Brendan Fraser is sort of a vulnerable frontrunner right now, but there was not a memorable enough speech from Austin Butler to say, hey, I'm a major contender. Hey, I should be considered for the best actor at the Oscars when I still think it's a, it's a competition. I think Fraser's in the lead right now, but I think Butler or Farrell are sort of number two, number three. But Butler had the opportunity to really go out there and say, I love Austin, I love Elvis, and this is my dedication to the man, and I spent two years working on this movie and really sort of hyped himself up. He just didn't really do that. It was a little bit more of a traditional speech. Not to, not a bad speech, but not enough to really wow the audience, and I was kind of expecting that from him. So maybe a, a missed opportunity in terms of a loss for Austin Butler. But that's about it. Stay tuned tomorrow or Friday where I'm going to give my thoughts on the PGA nominations, the SAG nominations, the DGA nominations. All the gills are coming out. Those are the real important things that we should look at versus something like the Golden Globes. The Golden Globes are fun. Hey, whatnot. You know, you can talk about whether or not you like Gerard Carmichael or whatnot. Ultimately, here I'm a predicting channel talking about the award season, what I think is going to win. That's why I get top 6% elite predictions of the Oscars, Golden Globes, Critics' Choice, what have you. So we're going to be covering what the SAG nominations PJ nominations and DJ nominations mean for Oscars come uh, you know Oscar voting eventually stay tuned in the next couple of days for that video so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video but that's about it until next time stay tuned <laughs>